coming up next on this edition of In the City. We get a personal tour of the newest Murfreesboro Fire Station. Also, a 40-year veteran of the Murfreesboro Police Department retires. Plus, local World War II hero Bill Allen is recognized for his 35 years as chairman on Murfreesboro's Golf Commission. And Patterson Park celebrated Black History Month with a community-wide celebration. We'll tell you all about those stories and more coming up right now on this edition of In the City. Welcome to another edition of In the City, your source for what's happening right here in the city of Murfreesboro. I'm Michael Lynn White. I was honored to get invited for a personal tour of the newest Murfreesboro Fire Station. We are here at the new Fire Station 4 off of Medical Center Parkway. I'm Michael Lynn White and I'm here with Battalion Chief Brian Lowe and he is going to give us a behind the scenes tour of the new station. We're really excited about it. Brian, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Well, we're just going to jump right on in. We are here at the Education Room, is that what it's called? The History and Education Center. Yes, and we have this beautiful refurbished engine that y'all actually won an award for, isn't that correct? Correct. This uh, steamer is going to be the centerpiece of our History and Education Center. Uh, the walls, we're going to have uh, signage, uh, we're going to have some illuminated stands uh, that pretty much uh, tells us about the history of the fire service and in particular the history of Murfreesboro Fire. This is really cool. I mean, when you're driving down Medical Center Parkway, you see this with all these windows and the big number four. The location, uh, as we spoke about earlier, it's uh, strategically placed to where the 100 foot platform which we'll see later it can can reach the center of town to those tall buildings there as well as the uh, buildings on the gateway and the new buildings out there it can serve both okay so i know we're going to go into this part of the building which y'all call the radio room so just tell us a little bit about this area correct uh, radio room communication room uh, you can see excuse our mess we still have stuff that we're putting together but uh, this is where our firefighters can gather and train or this is also where they would come and clock in in the mornings, do reports, uh, such stuff like that because once they come back from a run we're required to do our reports then. So it's kind of like and, a work a, yeah, workstation correct, for them. Correct. Okay good. Yeah. And then we yeah. have the captain's and office. Of course captain's office, rescue four and ladder four that's where they uh, do their reports and uh, staff and of course the battalion chief office that's mine. Which that's you, that's your office, that's important. So let's do everyone's favorite part. Let's go check out the kitchen. All right, follow me. Okay, here we are, this beautiful new kitchen. Tell us about this area. All right, well, our, our day room, kitchen area. Um, I guess you can see our big table here. It's the uh, centerpiece of it. Uh, crews on A shift uh, pitched in and built that. So we were having trouble finding a table big enough for the station, so the decals and the, and the craftsmanship of it, so they built this table. Okay, we got some guys here. They're in here, and like you were saying that they spend a lot of time here. They essentially live here, so the kitchen's a really important part of this building. That's correct. We spend a third of our lives here. Uh, our shifts are 24-48, so we uh, check in at 7 o'clock in the morning. We generally fix three meals uh, during that time, and uh, so yeah, kitchen's important. Firefighters got to eat, too. Okay, so this is a really cool part of this building. This is the only one in Murfreesboro where you have a police precinct here as well. So tell us about that. Okay, well, uh, this space right here, room, uh, we've uh, provided them a workspace, the, the officers, patrol officers, to come in and uh, do reports. Okay, so now let's check out the upstairs. Another part of this building is that this is the only one in Murfreesboro with two stories. So yes. let's go check out the second story and the bunk room. So now here we are on the second floor and we're gonna go into the training room here. The training room slash day room, uh, we like to meet. In the mornings, we can uh, go online. Our staff officer can talk to us through uh, virtual TV. And of course, we gotta get cameras and stuff. Of course, all that, all that stuff will be in place in a couple weeks. Okay, so now we wanna go check out the bunk rooms. Okay. So here we are into a really nice part of this building, the sleeping area or the bunk room. Yeah. How many rooms are up here? We have 12 sleeping spaces up here, two for captains, and then of course, 10 of the uh, firefighters and drivers. In the past, you know, privacy in the bunk rooms 
Uh, we've struggled with privacy just because it's one giant open room and we've installed curtains, there's walls and actual individual cubbies for the firefighters and drivers. So. Okay, so they're asleep at night and a call comes in. So how do they quickly get downstairs? Okay, well, uh, of course, the tones will go off in their individual rooms and then they will funnel this way out the door and to the slide. So just a few steps across the hallway, we have our uh, a door to our slide here. The slide. Yep. Okay, this is not a pole like most people think of. This is a slide and this is a new state-of-the-art building, so this must be the new thing. With poles, you know, you, uh, there's hazards, inherent hazards with that. People sliding down, hitting each other, uh, falling or twisting ankles or knees. So, yep, we have a slide. I think maybe we should check it out. Oh, gosh. Ah! Oh, Lord. Ah! <laughs> Okay, now we're here where everyone's favorite, the trucks. So let's talk about what all is going to go down in this area. Well, you see uh, drive through bay. Uh, this is our 100 foot platform, our Sutphin. Uh, it, was, uh, it was purchased to come to this station. So we have uh, Rescue 4, uh, which sits on the other side of this truck. So we have three disciplines of, of technical rescue that we maintain. Uh, Swift Water Rescue being one of them, Hazmat, it's at Station 9. Uh, you saw our urban search and rescue, it's going to be at Station 1. Okay. And y'all are right here by the river, so it makes sense that you would have that here. Correct. And this was needed in this part of town, in this location, this will help better serve Murfreesboro. That is true. We're, we're running out of here now. Uh, we're ready for, uh, we're responding to calls. Uh, Keep an eye open for uh, our grand opening, which uh, Chief will set that date uh, once he feels that we are up to that point. Uh, so that should be within the next few weeks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for joining us at this exciting behind the scenes look at Fire Station 4, again, off Medical Center Parkway. Thank you so much for giving us the grand tour. Yes, I'm Michael Lynn White, City TV. See you next time. A long-standing employee of the Murfreesboro Police Department retired and was sent off with a well-attended gathering. 40-year Murfreesboro Police Department veteran Major Clyde Atkinson retired from the force. Several showed up at the new police headquarters to send him off with good wishes and several awards. Starting his employment in 1978 as a dispatcher and soon moved to police officer. Over the years, he was promoted to sergeant, then to lieutenant, captain, and then to major. Chief Glenn Chrisman spoke about Clyde's sense of humor and says co-workers pick at him because they love him. And this is not an uh, indication of age or anything like that, but I mean, your career started before the Walkman uh, came out, so I mean, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and, and that says a lot, that, that, that's, that's longevity, uh, so. I remember a time right after Clyde bought his house and he'd had an alarm system put in because we were doing alarms, you know, we were, that was part of what he, he was responsible for. And so Spence goes on a call out there in the neighborhood and one morning and he calls Clyde on the phone and he says, your alarm is going off and somebody has broken into your home. That was, a, that was the quickest trip Clyde ever made from the police department to his house. <laughs> Only to get there and find Terry Spence in the front yard grinning and uh, carrying on. And there, there were a few choice words that were exchanged. But, uh... but if you've ever worked for the man and he brought you any paperwork, where did he always put your paperwork? In the chair, under the table. We would like to present you with a small going away gift. In the chair, your chair, under, under the table. <laughs>
the four most important words. What is your opinion? The three most important words, if you please. The two most important words, thank you. The one most important word, we. The least important word is I. So folks, it's not about me today. It's about to y'all. Y'all are the ones that made me. I thank you and I salute you. Bill Allen is a local hero in this community with his incredible D-Day story from World War II. He was recognized for his service on a local commission with the city of Murfreesboro. Oh. Mr. Bill Allen was recognized for his 35 years of service to the Murfreesboro Golf Commission. In 1984, Mayor Joe B. Jackson asked him to serve as the chair of the golf commission that would oversee the new city golf course. Old Fort Golf Course officially opened in August 1985. Mr. Allen is our only uh, chairman that we've ever had. One person serving uh, in a role that has taken us from not really having a golf course to having three golf courses, uh, Old Fort, uh, Bloomfield Links, and the VA. The staff, I know, appreciates what you've done. So it's my pleasure. Uh, I don't get to do this very often, but I want to be able to give you the key to the city for all the years that you served uh, willingly, uh, get volunteered your time and ably to the city of Murfreesboro. So, Mr. Allen, thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate you. Thank you, Dave. I'm so proud of you. The personnel. We couldn't have done anything over there without the personnel that we've had. Four o'clock in the morning, Joe will have his crew out raking traps, cutting grass, getting ready for the day. Our shop people have made the extra effort to say thank you, appreciate you coming out. Showed some appreciation. That's what's made the golf course advance and become the best municipal course in the state. I get credit for leading, but the credit goes to those that have actually made it. I appreciate all that everybody has done. I want to use the words of a famous comedian that was one of my favorite, Bob Hope. Thanks for the memory. I am so proud to, to, to know you, and um, I hope I picked up some of your good traits along the way, but you, you have meant so much to our family, and I know to this community, and, and um, we, we love you. I love you a bunch. Thank you very much. I just can't imagine today that our city being what it is without Old Fort Golf Course. Thank you for your leadership. I speak today on behalf of the 32,000 Tennessee Golf Association members statewide, the over 500 PGA professionals, and the 40,000 kids statewide to say thank you for your leadership here in Rutherford County and Murfreesboro, for helping us being able to accomplish what we can year in and year out. And, and we look forward to the many years we're going to discuss some stuff today that will move that into a different platform. And uh, we just want to say on behalf of the Tennessee Golf Foundation, Thank you for your leadership and your service to the game. Thank you very much, Rick. Yes, sir. You're a real friend. I don't want to see you retire. I want you to stay with us. <laughs> but I've enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you for your service. Gave me a lot of wisdom on how to work my way through the system, purchasing things because that's what you did at the electric department. You guided me, made things a lot easier uh, to be able to deal with the city and the policies and the way that things are going and put me in a situation where I was able to have a life that kept me here. So I just appreciate everything that you've ever done for me. 
I can say without a doubt, Mr. Allen served for the good of everybody, and I hope our country goes back to that, and we appreciate you. Thank you, Barry. You meant an awful lot to us. To kick off Black History Month in February, Patterson Park hosted a community-wide celebration to honor African American culture. Patterson Park Community Center kicks off Black History Month with its annual celebration of African American culture. With art from school kids and members of the community to a taste of soul food and much more, this event is a great way to honor and celebrate a vibrant culture. Community Initiatives Coordinator for the City School District says this night is all about celebrating diversity. Every kid in this school district, in this community, need to feel valued and they need to know their history uh, of their culture so that we can celebrate it, which of course to me brings about unity across this district and across this community and as a result across the world. Thanks to a partnership with Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation and Murfreesboro City Schools, along with various community supporters, free events like this are possible. No celebration would be complete without a performance. Performers from Bradley Academy and Northfield Elementary, even steppers from MTSU came out to show their support to a packed crowd in the Washington Theater. Kindergarten teacher Angela Bingham from Cason Lane Academy says she's proud of her heritage and hopes education and tolerance of diversity goes beyond a single event. I really think that diversity and multicultural activities should not be only celebrated in a day, but I think it should be lived as a lifestyle. Over 400 people attended the event, and organizers say it keeps growing every year. Reporting for City TV, Michael Lynn White. The downtown area has been a focus for growth in our city. The Murfreesboro Planning Department has been working hard to gather as much information from residents and business owners before recommending an overlay expansion to the Planning Commission. The Planning Department held a public input meeting at City Hall. The ordinance is affecting people that live and work in the downtown area. This is the last step before it heads to the Planning Commission to see if they will recommend it to the City Council for passage. So today we have, we're presenting the City Core Overlay um, expansion. Right now we have a City Core Overlay Zoning District that regulates design for a small portion of our downtown area. We're looking to expand that area to include the Highland area as well as the Historic Bottoms along with some smaller areas that lie right outside of, of those two major areas. Our goal tonight is to get as much feedback from citizens as we possibly can. Um, we will ultimately take this to the Planning Commission and then we'll take it on to the City Council uh, to, for adoption. But what this would do would regulate form, uh, so things like your setbacks, your building heights, uh, building materials and so forth. It's just so much more efficient to not only see what people think, but to hear how they're communicating, how it directly impacts them, and it's much more efficient because you're standing face to face and can have that dialogue. And I think people in the community appreciate the availability of staff and the elected officials to, to be at events like this so they have access to people that are making decisions. People uh, so far tonight seem very excited about what they're hearing. Um, we're getting a lot of positive feedback. Uh, they like the fact that we're taking some proactive steps to encourage development in downtown. They also like the fact that we're taking some proactive steps uh, to preserve the character of what already exists in our downtown area. Donald and the rest of the planning staff, they've done a lot of hard work to try to find a compromise with protecting what we love about the downtown area. Uh, but while also trying to invite opportunities to get better and to improve, uh, which is something I think we should be looking at as a city. And uh, anything that we can do to attract uh, more traffic downtown, more businesses downtown, um, you know, without losing that eye for the quality of life that we have on our downtown, without sacrificing that, I think we should be doing. Walkability is key. You have to have places where people can walk from their homes to businesses, to bars, to restaurants. You want a lively, active area. That's what attracts people to want to live downtown. That's what attracts people to want to stay downtown. Not every community ha is blessed with the type of downtown that we have in Murfreesboro. And so if you live in an area where you don't have to get in a vehicle to get on a main road to go get a gallon of milk you know we've got 
a grocery store down, uh, downtown, if you've got a restaurant option and multiple restaurant options, if you've got a dry cleaner, if you've got shopping, retail shopping, um, you keep the cars off the road and that's the piece that I think is really attractive that as we start talking about economies of scale and as we grow and growing smartly and smart development, investing in the downtown makes all the sense in the world. The Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department, along with City TV, produced a public service announcement to help prevent one of the most common fires in your residence. Hi, I'm Eugene Todd with the Murfreesboro Fire Rescue Department. I'd like to talk to you about preventing clothes dryer fires in your residence. 2,900 home clothes dryer fires are reported each year and cause $35 million of property loss. With a few simple maintenance steps, these fires are preventable. Did you know, you're at higher risk of having a clothes dryer fire if you don't clean your lint filter and dryer vents. Follow these simple safety tips to prevent a clothes dryer fire in your home. Do not use the dryer without a lint filter. Clean the lint filter before and after each cycle. Do not forget to clean the back of the dryer where lint can build up. Check the venting system behind the dryer to make sure that it is not damaged, crushed, or restricted. Murfreesboro Fire Rescue Department encourages you to follow these safety tips to reduce the risk of closed dryer fires. Several local organizations teamed up for another successful community baby shower held at Patterson Park Community Center. Having a new baby is an exciting time for any family. It can also be stressful if resources are low. That's why the Rutherford County Health Department has teamed up with the United Way of Rutherford and Cannon Counties, along with support from St. Thomas Rutherford Hospital to host their annual community baby shower. Nearly 500 people who will come through these doors and have access to more than 50 different community resources, as well as have the opportunity to attend classes um, that are offered for safe baby health um, and in that process they'll be able to pick up one of these baby bags that our volunteers are sorting right now and putting together. Over 100 volunteers stuff goodie bags filled with diapers, bottles, clothing and more. The classes offered are free and provide valuable information to new mothers. Organizers say the focus is healthy beginnings for children and this is a great way to lend a helping hand. As a mother myself, I understand that it really does take a village in order to help raise a child in today's society and so it's very important for me to be uh, an outlet and a conduit to help individuals who are um, and really just needing essential baby items and needing the resources that we have here in our community. If you missed this event and need assistance or for more information, contact the Rutherford County Health Department. Reporting for City TV, Michael Lynn White. We were invited to an open house to inform residents of the higher learning opportunities here in this area. The Tennessee College of Applied Technology, or TCAT, is the premier provider of workforce development to all residents of Tennessee. The 27 TCATs, as well as the 13 community colleges, are governed by the Tennessee Board of Regents' 19 board members. The Murfreesboro location hosted an open house for all area residents. Today we're at Tennessee College of Applied Technology in Murfreesboro at our main campus. We also have a campus in Smyrna. Um, we have an open house today to showcase all of our technical skill programs. All the programs are set up in our auditorium. You can ask questions. There's current students demonstrating things that they do in their program. So it's an alternative to community college or universities and at a cut in cost. We do have financial aid, we, we take Pell Grants, um, Wilder Navy that is particular to TCATS, um, Tennessee Promise, Tennessee Reconnect, etc. We accept people right out of high school with Tennessee Promise or adults that are wanting to change their career, of course can come back and go here anywhere from 8 months to 16 months and change their career. I'm studying the administrative office technology. I'm actually doing a, an accounting course right now. I chose the accounting. Um, it will help me out a lot in my future. Um, it's in every industry, so I'm really looking forward to gaining that experience to getting a job after I graduate. You're leaving here with certifications, diplomas, um, certificates if you don't want the whole diploma. There's um, some, in some programs, there's step ladders of course, so you can choose that. Um, in some programs like Allied Health, you become licensed practical nurse if you pass the program and pass the NCLEX certification exam. It's entry level employment, career ready. It's only 12 months for the program that I'm in, so that's, it goes by really fast. And 
you know, I'll be able to get all the jobs that I've struggled with getting before that I've wanted to have. So here at our Murfreesboro campus, we have administrative office technology, HVAC, digital graphic design, information technology and infrastructure management, dental assisting, surgical tech, central sterile processing, CAD, building and electrical construction trades, practical nursing, pharmacy tech, and cosmetology. At our Smyrna campus, we have welding, automotive, collision repair, machine tool technology, and industrial electrical maintenance mechatronics. We have both of the ladies in student services, they're great to talk to, and the ladies in financial aid and the bookstore, they'll help you get started with anything that you're interested in. If you're interested, um, we have a website, tcatmurfreesboro.edu. You can apply online there if you have any questions. Our phone number is 615-898-8010. The Lineball Library has been through some changes lately and they wanted to inform the public and invite them to visit. I'm Carol Gaddis, a branch librarian at Lineball Public Library and we're having an open house today to show off all the things that have happened in 2018. So many changes at Lineball starting with our foyer area, our circulation desk, we've uh, reconfigured to make more space here uh, at Lineball. This desk is relatively new as well and then we have put in new flooring and it's lightened things up. We've put in new shelves to have holds and pickups so people have a quick trip. If they just want to make a quick trip to the library, they can do it here. They don't even have to go anywhere else. They get their holds and go. And then we've moved a lot of books. So let me show you in the children's area and see what the changes are there first. Okay, so we are now in the children's area. This has been completely changed since last year. We've torn out walls and opened up this new space for the children's events here, we have a lot of people coming for story time and in the summer for the summer reading program. So we wanted to make this a more welcoming and safe place for our children, give them a little bit more security in this area. So all of our adult books that were downstairs are now upstairs and we've moved all of the children's books this way. So we've moved our youth services desk as well where Laura is sitting down there. You can wave, Laura. So one of the big needs that we had here at Lineball was for our teens and children to have study area for tutoring. There's a lot of teens that come in after school hours or children that need tutoring and we wanted to make them a, a safe space, a place just for themselves and so we have our teens, tweens and tutors area here where the children's area used to be. And then just over from there we have our club room which is a public meeting space that you can reserve for free. So this is our new media area. It's all DVDs, audiobooks, CD music, and our graphic novels are back in the corner. So it's all in one place for adults and teens. All right, so on the second floor, things have changed as well. We have all new public computers here at Lineball, so you can come and for, uh, with your library card and get on the public computer. And we also have moved all our adult fiction and nonfiction upstairs so all our adult reading material is now located together on the second floor. So we're very happy with all the changes that have happened at Lineball and we do hope you'll come in and visit us see what's happening go to our website online as well and see all our events we have a lot going on at Lineball Public Library. Any questions that you have about our services or what we offer at Lineball please call us at 615-893-4131 or visit and talk to our wonderful staff. They have worked so hard in 2018 to make all these changes possible and they are here to serve you. Well that's it for this edition of In the City. As always for more information about the city of Murfreesboro or any of the stories you've seen here you can always visit our website at www.murfreesborotn.gov and if you want to see one of the stories that you've seen today or catch up on some of the latest city news you can always visit the city of Murfreesboro's YouTube channel. I'm Michael Lynn White and until next time we look forward to seeing you in the city.